Now, in Covington this weekend, a miraculous premature two-week-old baby girl named Kalia disappeared. This is a child who fought to survive, who fought to live, was missing. So the community took action and searched. September 23rd, a five-pound Kalia McNabb is born. This is one of the few pictures family have of her. The words, Daddy's Girl, are stitched on her outfit. At 10 a.m. on October 7th, Kalia's mother, Courtney Bell, says she could not find her baby in their Newton County home, a 10-minute drive south of Covington. All right, how long have you been asleep? Um, the last time I woke up with her was around, I guess, 5, maybe. She's not in her sleeper. She, she, she's not here. I've looked everywhere. I've looked under clothes and everything. This 911 call at 10.38 a.m. to report her baby missing. What happened during those five hours on Saturday remains a mystery. 15-day-old Kalia McNabb from Covington was reported missing from the Eagle Point Trailer Park Saturday morning. Careful. Yes. missing, we know something is terribly wrong. A missing infant means someone has done something unspeakable. Hey man, I don't know who got my kid, man, but I want my kid back, man. That's my child, man. I want my kid, man. The sheriff's office began searching for the two-week-old. At sunset, deputies suspended their search and resumed on Sunday. He's like, well, y'all make sure y'all don't search where they've been searching. Y'all want to go out farther, farther. But despite McNabb's advice, around 4 p.m. Sunday in a wooded area, crews searched before. They found Kalia's body wrapped in a T-shirt and blanket off Henderson Mill Road and only 250 yards from the family's home. A sheriff's captain says when McNabb heard... He ran. That would be abnormal behavior for most people. Volunteers made the heartbreaking discovery Sunday. The baby's lifeless body left in some nearby woods. I look, Bubba. I know. I look. We were right there, guys. Hey, you hey, wouldn't have found her if we were not out there. I look, Bubba. I know. I look. We were right there, guys. Hey, This is the moment when search volunteers found Kalia's body. A deputy asked us to step back into a crime scene. They found her in a. Say sorry to Courtney. And didn't say sorry to Courtney's mama or nothing. He just ran. Just got out of the car. Despite his arrest, deputies say Christopher McNabb is only a person of interest. I want to show you what's happening here along Highway 36 in Newton County. You can see here the law enforcement presence on the scene. This is the area where Kalia. His father, Christopher McNabb, jumped out of his girlfriend's car and ran away. The sheriff's office is deferring to the coroner's office to officially identify the body, but family members I spoke to confirm Kalia McNabb was found dead. I wish I could get my hands on him and I'll show y'all on camera what's going through my mind. Uh, but we're going to let the law handle it to the fullest extent. Two week old baby. 
don't see how he lives with himself. Now, we were also there when Kalia McNabb's mother was taken in for questioning. That's Courtney Bell in the back of this police car, clearly distraught. Now, as far as the mother is concerned, she was taken into police custody this afternoon. She gave a statement to them. Police are not calling her a person of interest at this point in the we were hoping for a better outcome. We were. I mean, anybody would. But we also was hoping just to find her and bring her home regardless. So last night, our crew was there. We saw Chris McNabb appeared to be grief-stricken as a father. He was erratically running up the stairs of his home, screaming he wanted his baby back. But today was a different story. He took off running late this afternoon when he was told the body of a small infant had been found near his home. And within three hours, police received a tip that he was at a nearby car wash. I was standing there waiting on customers. He came in. And somebody said that's him. Store surveillance cameras captured Christopher McNabb, seen here wearing a cap and gray shirt, enter this Chevron on Highway 36 in Covington just after 7 Sunday night, four hours after police named him a person of interest and his daughter's disappearance. He was attempting to make an escape. He was running, but the units were able to, to uh, intercept him and arrest him. Only Fox 5 was there when Newton deputies and Covington police rushed to this Chevron on Highway 36. A clerk at the store called 911 when Christopher McNabb walked in. They gonna get me, they gonna get me. I've been running all day, I've been in the woods all day. Julie Hanna says customers recognize McNabb from the news and tell us he was acting strange. He kept saying, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, we didn't do it, they did it. And when y'all are gonna be surprised when y'all find out who really did it. I'm telling all y'all. Looking for me, and I've been hiding in the woods. He said, But I didn't do it. I just want the world to know I didn't do that to my baby. This capture came four hours after searchers found a baby's body. Family members tell us the baby was two weeks old, wrapped in a blanket, and located in woods not far from the home where McNabb's 15 day old daughter Callia disappeared on Saturday. Investigators say McNabb was with Callia's mother when the body was found. Christopher had learned that the body had been found, jumped out of a car he was in. Detectives took Callia's mother in for questioning, but say she isn't considered a suspect. McNabb, on the other hand, is being called a person of interest in the case. And I hate it because I did it, but I did it for the baby. That was sad. Now, Vinny, just to give you some perspective, this is about a quarter mile away from the house. Dog search teams searched this area the day before and came up with nothing. So on Sunday, he walked inside this food mart back here and told the clerk he did not do it. She called 911. As soon as that happened, he ran this way toward this car wash, and that's where deputies took him down. What? Chris McDab was found. Your thoughts? Oh, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I couldn't be happier about it. Uh, we heard somebody, yeah, I ain't gonna say that on there, but uh, I'm very ecstatic. We're happy. Courtney, uh, we thought they were gonna try to get her with charges, but it's not gonna be anything. So they just dropped her off, so she's cleared of everything. Big sigh of relief for you. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And I'm about to see him come through the gate and just, yeah. He, uh, I ain't gonna say too much on camera. Yeah. And he said, everybody here, he didn't kill his baby. Catherine Wesley showed me cell phone video the moment deputies swarmed Christopher McNabb. They got him behind the car wash. Just minutes before, surveillance video shows McNabb walking to the gas station just after 7 o'clock Sunday night. Catherine was inside with a friend. He was soaking wet. He had on blue, black pants, a black shirt, and a white hat. Investigators say her father ran away. He turned up at this gas station four hours later. Well, he was looking crazy, so I was focused on her, and then I was focused on him when he would leave. Uh, he was real wet and nasty. Well, I guess we have been running through the woods in the rain. I recognize the tattoos from TV. Julie Hanna is the woman behind the counter. He come back up here, and he started talking to me. You know me? You recognize me? And I said, no. He said, uh, I was in here last night talking to you guys about uh, my baby getting kidnapped. He went on and on and on, just rambling, talking about everybody's going to look crazy when they realize that I didn't do it, it wasn't me, you know, it, it wasn't the baby's mama, y'all all, all going to look crazy when you figure this out. 
And then as soon as he got to the door, as he opened it, I had 911 on the phone. And why did he run? Because he did it. Because he did it. That's why he ran. We were at the Newton County Jail when relatives found out deputies arrested Christopher McNabb on a probation violation out of Bartow County. Investigators say until they can find probable cause, McNabb is only a person of interest in clear the medical examiner still needs to identify the body but family members told me Kalia McNabb was found dead as for her father Christopher McNabb deputies arrested him on a probation violation right now he's only considered a person of interest family on Sunday afternoon I was scheduled to meet McNabb and his girlfriend Courtney Bell when they found out search volunteers discovered Kalia's body Bell was taken in for questioning and told investigators McNabb jumped out of the car along Highway 36 near their home. She was released. Then he was coming over there to do an interview with you Child guys. 2 and it's sick. After a four hour search, a convenience store clerk spotted McNabb and called 911. Deputies arrested him at a nearby car wash. He was attempting to make an escape, he was running. McNabb does have a long criminal record. McNabb is being held on an unrelated probation violation out of Bartow County. Meanwhile, the folks here at GBI are going to conduct an autopsy to determine if that baby's body that was located is, in fact, the missing girl from Newton County. What would you tell whoever did it? That you're going to hell. That's where you're going. Killing a youngin' like that, something... That little and tiny, defenseless, you are going to hell. McNabb sits in jail on a probation violation out of Bartow County. Investigators say there's not enough evidence to connect him to Kalia's death, but remains a person of interest. Certainly quite the scene out here on Sunday night. Now, Kalia's mother, Courtney Bell, gave a statement to the sheriff's office. I'm told she is cooperating with the investigation. Investigators say they'll have a better idea of where to go next with this case as soon as the medical examiner officially identifies the body and also reveals the cause of death. The Newton County coroner ruled Tuesday that Kalia's death was a homicide, blunt force trauma to the head. We talked to people who say they had hoped this was all just a terrible accident, but now more than ever, they say little Kalia is in their prayers. Whoever it may be that does such a cruel tragedy thing, Lord, I pray that justice be served and we thank you and we praise you, Lord. A precious soul taken too soon. Neighbors and strangers light candles in memory of Kalia McNabb outside her family's Covington home. Just to come and, you know, when nobody forgets this little angel, I mean, she, she deserves to be remembered. You know, she didn't have a chance, but she's with God now. When I heard the trauma to the blunt force it was just it made it worse so we know that baby suffered we know without a doubt she wasn't sleeping and just passed on it doesn't matter god knows and god will god will deal with whoever whatever happened to her god will deal with in his way walk me through um you know, we talked to uh, i think some information last talked to you from Fortunately, when the uh, the body was recovered, uh, sort of what's taken place uh, since that point to now, sort of leading to these warrants. When the body was recovered, the coroner came and took custody of the body. The coroner is responsible for determining the manner and cause of death. The body was transported to the GBI crime lab, where a medical examiner conducted an investigation jointly with the coroner. Based on their findings of examining the body and looking at medical records from the birth of the child and a well uh, baby visit, then they determined that the manner and cause of death was homicide and blunt force trauma. What, uh, what can you tell me about, um, I think I saw the uh, charges that you passed along with Chrissy Etheridge at their station. Um, can, you, can you run through those uh, charges for me that the father mm -hmm. is now facing? It's malice murder, felony murder, aggravated battery, and concealing the death of another. And then I know on, uh, what was it, Sunday evening, I, I, uh, if I have my timeline correct, that he was taken into custody. Since that point, I understand he's been uh, interviewed by investigators. 
Can you tell me anything about those interviews? Has he cooperated? Has he confessed to anything? Is any new information you're able to learn from the interviews? And uh, we did interview him to a point where he didn't wish to talk anymore, and then it was terminated. Okay. Um, the exact nature of it we wouldn't discuss at this time. That'd be something for court. Mm -hmm. What um, What can you tell me about the mother or any other relatives or anything? Uh, is there any possibility for additional charges? Anyone else involved in this, or does it seem like it was solely the father that uh, carried this out? And... Anytime we make an arrest, we base it on probable cause. We have probable cause and presented that probable cause to a judge who signed the warrants for his arrest. Uh, we haven't reached that level in any with any other person. Mm -hmm. So no, there's no charges pending against the mother. Any, uh, anyone else, I know the father just began as a person of interest as you guys were gathering uh, evidence, I'm assuming, and details. Any other persons of interest at this point or, or is the father the, the, the sole person involved as, at this point? At this point in the investigation, he's gonna be the sole person. Okay, um, and as far as the uh, mother, I don't know if you can share anything. I know, uh, I believe it was on Sunday, she came and offered up a statement. I listened to the, the 911 call from her and she uh, was just describing that her baby was gone. She was looking for her baby and she, reason for calling 911 was that she needed help. Um, has she offered uh, any other, anything else to the sheriff's office that you can share with me or is that sort of the story on 911 that's similar to what she shared with you all? Uh, we interviewed her to initial uh, call and we interviewed her subsequent to that and she's cooperated, she's come in and has given us statements. What, um, is there anything you can share with me maybe on the sheriff's office and uh, the line of work you were in and, and we're in, we, we carry or uh, cover Terrible stories, unfortunately, and, and you guys have to investigate. How, how tough has this been on your investigators? You have a two-week-old in your community missing and then found dead. It's hard. The victims of crimes are are usually, well, this victim in particular, being 15 days old, was completely dependent on adult care and adult supervision. And, Whatever failed, whatever happened, she died. And it's just heart rendering to have something like that happen and know that that child is no longer alive. And uh, I know the details are probably pretty gruesome, um, but uh, as far as the, the child's injuries, I was reading through the warrant real quick, the, the blunt force trauma, unfortunately, to, to the child's head uh, with an unknown object. And, is that right? The cause and manner of death was ruled by the medical examiner was blunt force trauma. The exact nature of it, we're going to leave for the district attorney's office to reveal, and it would probably come during the um, trial. All right, time to get a little more perspective into the um, mystery of that infant in Covington that was found. And as we do that, um, let's go back. Baby Kayla, Kalia was reported missing. An infant's body was found close to her home. The father of the baby, of this wonderful little baby, is in custody on an alleged probation violation out of Bartow County, has not been charged in this case. Meanwhile, uh, we expect an autopsy to be performed tomorrow. Let me bring in our think tank, introduce them. Who we have? Latonya Hines is with us, prosecutor in Cobb County. Great to see you. Lawrence Zimmerman, criminal defense attorney with us, and Dr. Joyce Morley, psychotherapist and relationship expert. Let me start here. How long can they hold the father on a probation violation, okay? Because he hasn't been charged in this case. They don't have the evidence, they haven't done the autopsy. How long can they hold him? Well, Bartow County is the one that has jurisdiction, not Newton. So he has to go to Bartow County for the probation violation because that's where the warrant's from. So indefinitely until he has a hearing. Until he, and it, okay. Right. So how does that work with a with probation hearing? I mean, it, is, that, is the judge at the probation hearing going to know what's going on in Newton County and say, hey, listen, we got well, we to keep this thing. guy locked up? Here's the thing, Vinny. What's governing the probation violation is whatever is in that petition for that warrant that they got out. And so what is causing the violation? Whatever he's on probation for, is it because he's gotten new charges? Is it because he didn't do what he was supposed to do under his original sentence? That's what's the question before the judge. But right now, because he's got that probation violation, um, that hold, there's no bond. So right now, this is almost the perfect time for the investigators in this case so it's to, buying them some time to, get to things be able ready. to investigate before they actually right. do charges. Earlier today, I, I spoke with uh, Joseph Scott Morgan. He's a death investigator from Jacksonville State University. And we had a conversation about, you know, the investigation into uh, this case. Take a listen. What kind of care, what kind of care did this child receive following birth? That, that, that 15 day period when this 
little precious angel was with us, how was that baby cared for in that period of time? You know, uh, Dr. Joyce, and, and Joseph was talking a lot about this, about the, what was happening inside that home. Right. To me, it's all about the relationship because you have two people and a baby. That's right. It's a relationship between the mother and the father. We don't know what was going on before that child died, before they found the child today. Something had to be going on. You can just listen to dad. Very volatile. Was there domestic violence going on? Was the child neglected? Was mother being abused? Were there drugs going on? Was there something that was there that shouldn't probably have been there? What if it was an accident? It could have been an accident. We don't know. But the bottom line comes down to, even if it was an accident, did mom tell that it was an accident? Did she try to get some help? Well, so no matter what went on, she still had an obligation to say to someone and get some help. Well, here's if the thing. We're, we're, we're still talking about this. And even though I'm a prosecutor, I still look at the facts. Right now, we we're still know. waiting, mm -hmm. OK? Remember, it was a coroner's area, but now the GBI is doing this because this is one of those types of deaths that the GBI will look into. There's five different types of deaths you can have. But let, let's talk about this for a second. When there's a search by the public, right? Mm -hmm. And when word comes out that the baby has been found, the father takes off. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and to me, is that evidence? Is that evidence of guilt? Yeah, well, it's but it's absolutely evidence. I mean, it's evidence that can be used against him to show guilt. I mean, it's a bad fact for him. The fact when he found out his kid was dead, he took off running and then started screaming, I didn't do it. He didn't say who. Are they going to try to get these two to turn against one another? Absolutely. That would be the best thing possible, Probably. okay? Because we don't know what happened, but maybe it was an accident. But if they know what happened, they were the ones who were there. So the best possible thing for prosecution for the police department is that if the mom was there when something happened, getting her to tell the truth. Do you, do you think that can happen, Dr. Joyce? It, do you think in a situation like this? Because their stories initially are, surely, are consistent. Surely. It could happen. If she was in an abusive situation, this may be safe haven for her. Uh, the police finding out what's going on. Here's an opportunity for me to now get out the house. You all have actually saved me, even though it was at the expense of her child dying. And so we, it really could we be that. We do have to say, we don't know that any abuse was right. Right. We don't know. And we still need to We don't even know how the child died. The a lot of questions. Back, right? Or if it is the child. What if the autopsy comes back and it's natural causes, right? And maybe they just whole different story. Hey, Force trauma. That's a phrase that medical examiners often use when they're taking a look and describing what happens in a death involving a blow to the head with an object. Now, many times this happens in a fight, a brawl, maybe an attack. But tonight, we're talking about baby Kalia. There she is, a picture of her sleeping. She was just five pounds, 15 days old when she died from blunt force trauma. Kalia, born on September 23rd, 2017, was with her mother in the hospital for two days. Courtney was discharged, but Kalia stayed in the hospital for two more days. Courtney and Chris picked up Kalia on September 27th. On October 1st, Courtney left her infant daughter with a cousin and left, not telling the cousin where she'd be or when she'd be back. On October 3rd, Courtney's father took Kalia home with him, bringing Kalia back to Courtney on October 6th. Courtney reported Kalia missing on October 7th. Kalia's body was found in some woods near the home the next day. Kalia's own father, Christopher McNabb, who's accused of malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, and concealing Kalia's death. Now, according to warrants just released today, McNabb struck the baby with an unknown object, causing her skull to be seriously disfigured. Well, today I spoke with Dr. Aldouan Tart, a psychologist. He's also a relationship expert. And I wanted to get his insight into two things related to this case. First, the alleged domestic violence in baby Kalia's home and the mom's state of mind, which a lot of viewers and followers have been asking about. Well, I showed him our interview today with baby Kalia's grandfather, who says his daughter was a victim of domestic violence. We just found out all these beatings. Uh, uh, Sunday, when she went in for more questioning, you know, mm -hmm. after they arrested him, Sheriff's Department took pictures of her back and all, which was just about a solid bruise, what, what they say. And, you know, she hid all that all these years from us, you know. He had her, her self-esteem so low mm -hmm. that she felt like that. Nobody would listen to her. That, right. Yes, sir. You know, that he was the only one that she could turn to, you know. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tarr, let's talk about that first of all, the, the, the self-esteem issues and what's happening. Now, what's her world like? Isolated. Uh, whenever there's domestic violence, the, the abuser likes to isolate them from friends and family so that he can have more control over her. So you heard the dad say, we didn't know anything about these beatings. And so when you have your self-esteem focused on one person whose job is to knock you down so you need him more, then she's isolated. 
Now, I also played for Dr. Tart the 911 call that the mom made after discovering baby Kalia was missing last Saturday. She's not in her sleeper? I, she's not in her sleeper. She, she, she's not here. I've looked everywhere. I've looked under clothes and everything. Do you think somebody took her, ma'am? My child said, my, my, my two-year-old said she's gone. A lot of people on social media are commenting on the mom. Some people say something's off here. What do you hear? I hear anxiety. I hear mom is trying to be calm, is calling 911, hoping for the best, and, but I also hear anxiety in her voice about what could happen. Something interesting, when people have been through trauma, a lot of times their voice sounds calm because it's somewhat of the norm. And we do that sometimes, and we try to stay calm because we're trying to say, maybe she'll turn up, maybe she's grandpa got her, or dad got her, we'll find her. And so she wouldn't call 911 if she thought her baby was dead. We will be getting with the district attorney's office, presenting them with all the information and evidence that we have. Kalia McNabb was reported missing and was discovered behind her family's home. The infant's mother was questioned by cops and released. She was a real good mom. She gave me clothes for my baby after her baby grew out of them. The baby's father was also brought in for questioning. We had interviewed him several times, but there has been no confession. Christopher McNabb now faces several charges, including malice murder and concealing a death. Fox 5's Angelique Proctor joins us now with new information in this case. Angelique. Well, Elise, good afternoon. These charges were certainly expected, but they are painful for the family nonetheless. Now, the sheriff says they were officially filed this morning at the Newton County Jail. Chris McNabb had been held on uh, probation violation since shortly after the baby disappeared. Those charges were upgraded this morning to malice murder, felony murder, aggravated battery, and concealing a death. That's after an autopsy revealed his daughter died from blunt force trauma to the head. The sheriff's office revealed new information about how McNabb responded the moment he learned 15-day-old Kalia was missing. The baby was found in the afternoon. Uh, some, someone at the trailer park or, or knew what had happened had texted the mother. The mother happened to be in a car with the father and they were at the intersection of Highway 36 and a bypass. When he learned that the baby's body had been discovered, he jumped out and ran. Now McNabb is being held without bond. We expect he will make his first appearance before a magistrate judge tomorrow. Afternoon. I had a chance today to talk to Courtney Bell. She is the baby's mother. And although she was still too upset to talk on camera, she told me that she was surprised to learn that Christopher McNabb, the baby's father, was charged with murder in this case. Law enforcement is, you know, we deal with a lot of tragedy. But this is a little 15 day old baby, helpless, totally dependent on adult care. And for whatever reason, the child died. The Newton County Sheriff's Office says little Kalia McNabb's murder has pulled at the heartstrings of even the most seasoned deputies. Captain Keith Crum tells us it was Kalia's own dad, Christopher McNabb, who was responsible for killing his daughter. The county coroner announced Tuesday the baby died from blunt force trauma to the head. I think we know and can prove in the court what happened, and that's the next step. The baby's mother, Courtney Bell, told me by phone Wednesday she is totally surprised that McNabb was arrested for murder. According to the sheriff's office, the murder suspect has a criminal history and initially talked to them, but no longer is. He had made a couple initial statements and then he indicated to investigators that he did not wish to talk anymore. Melissa Kalia's grandfather tells me the charges filed today brings their family hope that justice will be served. As far as his daughter, Courtney Bell, he tells me the relationship she had with Chris McNabb uh, was one that she found herself trapped in. Listen here as he walks me through the relationship he described as physically abusive. We just found out all these beatings uh, Sunday when she went in for more questioning, you know, mm -hmm. after they arrested him. Yeah. And Newton County had her in for more questioning and all, you know. Sheriff Department took pictures of her back and all, which was just about a solid bruise. She hid all that all these years from us, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, what she should have done wasn't told somebody. He had her, her self-esteem so low mm -hmm. that she felt like that. Nobody would listen to her. That, right. Yes, sir. You know, that he was the only one that she could turn to, you know. Mm -hmm. And. This was the outcome of it, you know. 
he was a monster. He was like the devil, you know. And, just uh, how he treated your daughter or just, other people? or Just how he treated my daughter. And, you know, and I guess he treated other people like that too, you know. I can't imagine anybody hurting of an innocent baby like that, you know. I just, I just cannot imagine that. And here at the Newton County Sheriff's Office, I asked about those claims of Courtney Bell being in an abusive relationship with Chris McNabb. I am told by a captain here, investigators are focused on investigating the death of Kaliam McNabb, but they have talked with Courtney about those allegations. They are taking them very seriously. They're collecting evidence and uh, her statements on, uh, that, uh, on those claims, and we'll present all of that to the district attorney. Uh, some very disturbing details from those arrest warrants. According to the documents, Christopher McNabb hit his daughter so hard, allegedly hit her so hard with an unknown object that has disfigured her skull. I would hang my head too because the world now is looking at your face. Murder suspect Christopher McNabb never held his head up during his first court appearance Thursday before a magistrate judge. Fox 5 News has learned more details about how investigators believe the 27-year-old father allegedly took the life of his own 15-day-old daughter, Kalia. Arrest warrants indicate McNabb struck the baby with an unknown object, which caused her skull to be seriously disfigured and damaged beyond repair. The news baffles McNabb's next door neighbor. She was so tiny. Why do you have to pick something up to bludgeon a two week old baby? The disturbing details reveal the charade his neighbors now realize he was wrapped up in during the weekend searches. He was so sincere about wanting his baby back. And then um, all the time, he killed her. McNabb is being held in isolation. He did not ask for an attorney, and deputies confirm he is on suicide watch, charged with felony and malice murder, aggravated battery, and concealing a death. I can't understand it. He must have the devil in him, you know, because he was truly a monster. The cause of death, medical examiners ruled, was blunt force trauma to the head. Baby's grandfather is full of grief. Her time on this earth was brief. But she touched so many souls and so many hearts. As a person of interest in Kalia's disappearance, he then became a wanted man. Three hours later, McNabb walked into a gas station two miles from the family's home. Unprovoked, he began telling the clerk about Kalia. He said, you know, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. The clerk called 911. Deputies arrested him moments later at a car wash next door for a probation violation out of Bartow County. On October 10th, GBI autopsy results ruled Kalia's death a homicide from blunt force trauma to her head. The next day, Newton County filed four charges against McNabb, including felony murder. Hours later, Courtney Bell's father claimed McNabb was abusive and explained why there was no police record of it. He had her, her self-esteem so low mm -hmm. that she felt like that Nobody would listen to her. That, right. Yes, sir. You know, that he was the only one that she could turn to. After today's court appearance, McNabb is expected to now go before a grand jury for Kalia's murder as early as November 3rd. Today we've been looking in depth at the criminal history of Christopher McNabb. There are mug shots spanning many years, 10 years in fact, and his appearance has changed significantly in early mug shots. There are no tattoos on his face or on his neck. He has quite a rap sheet with nearly 20 offenses in four counties. Most of them happened when he was a teenager. He was arrested for burglary in 2017. He was also booked for probation violations in 2011 and earlier this month. Our team of journalists is dedicated to covering this story and digging deeper. You can see our ongoing investigation on 11alive.com, also through the 11 Alive. So you had seen the dad, yeah. but not... Never met him or spoke to him or anything. I didn't even know that there was a new baby in the house. Did you get that impression that there were any problems, or did you... I've heard some noise, but I've never heard screaming, arguing, hollering outside. Okay. So, uh, so you're pretty close, so it, I mean, yeah. if there was something really loud, and you didn't hear anything over the weekend, right? And you were here? Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't. And that, how, what was it like to wake up Saturday morning and see, like, police out My here? My daughter came over and said, uh, 
there's place everywhere, Mama. Something's going on there in the backyard. And I said, well, I wonder what happened with Liz and Kathy next door. I, I know them. And she said, I don't know what it is. And I came out from the store and couldn't get out and went around the news vans. Right. And, and that's when they said that this, the baby was missing. So they had gone in and kidnapped the baby out of this house. And were you... They went in. That, that scared me, you know. So, yes. they, the, so they had gone in and the, and the baby was gone. And so he said she was nine weeks old. So they said she was two weeks old. I, you know, right. I didn't know. You knew she know. wasn't too old because you hadn't even seen her. I hadn't even seen her yet, yeah. And then... Uh, I was out here with my little dogs when when her daddy was out here talking and he said, I just want my baby back. Right. And it, I, it made me cry. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. Said, his baby's gone. Right. I had prayed that whoever had her, maybe it was somebody that, you hear about that all the time, people wanting babies, they'll steal somebody's baby and hoping that she was alive. I'm sure she wasn't. And it, yeah, I don't know. He was so sincere. Or we thought. And he killed her. He killed her. And I just it scared me to death to be right here. But I don't, you know, nobody knows why. Right. And it, something must have snapped with him. Or something, and uh, I don't. I don't think that, and they've got a two-year-old. I don't think he he would have hurt that baby unless something snapped.